yes, Tom, Thomas Schrader asked, uh, my question to you is what story do you think that's been underreported that may end up changing things uh, for the Second Amendment movement for better or worse? So I yeah. think that uh, the answer to this, at least I have two, and I'm interested in your thoughts as well, but I think that'll roll into Stephen's question too. Um, but uh, why don't you, what are your two, first of all, right. for better or worse? Yeah. So for better, I think we were kind of on the same page about hmm. there's just not a lot of follow up done on on that rise of gun ownership that I was kind of alluding to with the previous question. Yeah. Uh, we've, we obviously covered it extensively as it was happening. It was showing up in the data that look, at all these new gun owners, several million new gun owners. And you've seen a smattering of stories here and there, usually in local news about look at this new that, the, you know, gun training is getting more diverse and that sort of thing. But there really hasn't been a ton of reporting on the, maybe the political dynamics that that might bring about, uh, which has the potential. We've talked about this pretty extensively over the last few years, has the potential to shift the politics of of gun rights. Because, you know, when you have more people owning guns, you see it reflected in polling data. If you own guns, you're more likely to support or at least more likely to oppose stricter access to guns or, or overly strict gun laws. And so there hasn't been a ton of of at least evidence or, or digging into whether or not that's shifted the needle uh, one way or another. Uh, I know yeah. that's something you thought about as well. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest undercovered. Like it's something that has gotten some coverage and we've certainly written a lot about it. And we we even had a piece this week on uh, youth shooting sports and how they're growing uh, at this, this moment. And um, uh, I just think that from a, like a macro perspective of media, that's not gotten a lot of coverage. It's gotten some, but for the the potential effect that it could have in the long term, it hasn't gotten a, nearly enough attention, in my opinion, um, and probably hasn't gotten enough attention inside the even just the gun owning community or, or the gun industry itself. Not this isn't to say that it's gotten no attention. It has got it, you know. There's been groups that have come up. There've been. Uh, efforts by the industry and by gun rights uh, advocates to uh, try to connect with these new gun owners that, and look, this is not a trend that started into 2020. It's more of a trend that accelerated in 2020. But uh, I think that that's the one major story that even with the coverage it has received is still undercovered. It's still uh, underappreciated. Uh, for the potential impact it could have. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, and what's your, what's your story on the other end? Something that doesn't get enough coverage that could have a negative impact on uh, the gun rights movement at least. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of, I think it's sort of related to, to your negative coverage thing that we, we kind of talked about this before we started recording, but there's sort of been an underappreciation, I think is a better word for it of we're still seeing kind of a slip in gun sales. So despite this boom of, new gun owners that we saw, maybe they'd be future, you know, collectors or spree buyers. We're actually seeing year over year so far this year, uh, multiple months where gun sales are way down. And it's funny that that's happening in a political environment where we have probably the most openly gun control president in maybe ever, but at least yeah. for the last few generations, at right? At least since the nineties. Yeah. At least since yeah. Clinton. Yeah. And, and it's also, we're coming up on a presidential election when usually things start to wrap up when you know you don't know who, when things are sort of in the air politically you don't know who's going to take power you tend to see gun sales spike in those occasions and we're not really seeing that right now and it'd be interesting to to know kind of what's behind that and i think that's sort of underappreciated that maybe are we seeing waning influence in in gun ownership it, it, you know there's just i think underexplored what's behind that yeah and i, I think that plays into steven's question here um you know he said uh, i understood that the net gun owners and ownership increased during the pandemic any uh, evidence that they these new gun owners are still engaged, you know, training, shooting, um, you know, uh, other aspects of, of firearms, ownership, reloading, competing, collecting, uh, or was it just a fad is, is this question. And I think that goes into uh, what you're talking about there with, uh, you know, we, we think that these new gun owners represent this potential sea change in gun culture and gun politics, but, uh, you know, how, how has that actually played out to this point? Are we still seeing that? And I think that your point there about gun sales declining, um, 
speaks to, I guess, at least some evidence against this idea, because, you know, certainly you had record sales in 2020 and you had you know, the second best sales in 2021 and then third best in 2022. Uh, but now we're, st but each step along you're in decline and in 2023, it's continued to decline and somewhat dramatically, you know, we've, we've covered this um, back in June, the numbers were down 20% year over year. That means June's sales numbers. And look, June is a not a great year for, or a great month for gun sales generally. They tend to decline in, in the summer. Uh, so June compared to April is always going to be worse or compared to December. But when you compare June to June, you're getting more of an apples to apples comparison. And it was 20%, 20% decline year over year. So that's that's really bad. Um, right. If you're uh, in a member of the gun industry or uh, if you're looking for sustained momentum among new gun owners for, you know, going out and adding to their collection or what have you. Um, and that we saw that trend continue in July, where July was down 17 percent year over year from the previous July. And, uh, you know, it's not as though we've seen a huge see change in polling uh, during this time period. If anything, that's actually my uh, undercovered, underappreciated story in the negative direction. If you're a gun rights advocate, polling has been uh, the, the macro trend of polling uh, over the last really decade or more uh, has been going in the wrong direction. Uh, if you're, if you, if you pose stricter gun laws, because the, it's been, going in favor of stricter gun laws for quite a while. And that includes the sort of ebbs and flows that we talk about with uh, surrounding mass shootings, right? It's surrounding high profile events. Um, you tend to get a spike and then a decline back down towards normal levels. However, if you look over a long enough trend line, those lower levels will still be higher than the previous lows. And that's something I think people uh, haven't dealt with a lot in the gun rights uh, movement. And, and we have, we also haven't seen necessarily a huge shift, uh, because of these new gun owners on that point. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, you have seen, there've been, uh, some trends that we followed that move in the other direction, right? As assault weapons bans in particular, it's kind of one of the interesting things about the political dynamics you were talking about with the president Biden, right? He's, he's pushing for assault weapons bans, which is really the first time you've seen that from president since Clinton, uh, where they actually passed one. But uh, at the same time, that trend, the, <laughs> sorry, polling for that particular policy has dropped. And it's yeah. dropped among younger people, which are part of this whole gun culture 2.0. Um, yeah, although, you know, some people don't think that's the right uh, term for it necessarily, but, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, that was another comment we got from, a from, I think it was from Steven himself. It was like, it's, does it really make sense to call these people gun culture 2.0 if they're defined by wanting self-defense or, uh, wanting to do competitive shooting or uh, owning guns for defense from people and from, uh, the government or, or what have you, because that's really, a not a new idea in any sense, and uh, maybe even just a reversion back to the 18th and 19th century views of firearms ownership. But regardless, uh, and that's maybe a fair point, but regardless, um, you have seen that effect. But it's it hasn't been much broader than that, in my opinion. Uh, what do you think? I know I think it's a shrewd point because it is the assault weapon ban historically, if you looked at historical trends in polls, that was one of the main policies to spike in the aftermath of mass shootings. Right. But as you pointed out, we've seen a pretty sticky indication that it's around like 50%. We've seen some dip below majority support, you know, multiple polls confirming this at the same time that other policies, you know, be it red flag laws or I don't know, take your pick. Any other gun control policy have seen a spike at the same time. Yeah. Um, so on the one hand, you have maybe perhaps a win uh, for gun rights advocates, maybe an underappreciated win on the assault weapons ban polling. But at the same time, as you pointed out, which I think is shrewd, there's sort of an underappreciated worrying sign in the polls where you're seeing 
not great signs. We've covered polls where folks are now for the first time in, in over a decade saying it's more important to reduce, quote unquote, reduce gun violence, whatever that means to to respondents than it is to protect gun rights, for example. So yeah. the, the, the deprioritization of gun rights among the general public, maybe outside of the gun rights movement, I think is something that's not being fully appreciated because there's such a sugar high from the Bruin decision and because court cases are going so well for the gun rights movement at the moment. Sometimes some of that stuff can kind of get lost in the conversation that the polling trends are perhaps slightly worrying. I think that's I think that's exa- exactly right. I mean, if you're a gun control advocate, it's they're moving in the right direction. But and I'm right. talking here mainly about you know the macro trends, like the more yeah. the vibe check stuff. Like, do you want that's to right. your yeah. gun laws? Do you prefer gun, you know guns restrictions to gun preserving gun rights those sorts of polling questions that don't ask about a specific policy necessarily um, but about how Americans feel about guns at a given point in time those are all trending towards stricter gun laws um, and and that's something I don't think has gotten enough attention in uh, at least in the gun rights movement people tend not to focus much on that. Um, yeah. It gets a lot of attention, I will say, uh, in major media, obviously. There's yeah. There's oh, a yeah. lot of focus there. So maybe it's oh, not yeah. undercovered, and that's in, in the sense that there's a lot of media coverage of, uh, of those basic numbers. And then and media, sort of the opposite happens with the assault weapons ban numbers, right? Yeah. I feel like those get a lot of attention in the gun rights community and not much attention to major media. So. Uh, yeah, either way, you you want to make sure that you have a full view of what's going on if you uh, with any issue, but uh, in particular in this scenario with how people are reacting uh, to these polls and not just rely on um, you know the ones that make you feel good or the ones that make you feel bad. You got to try and take them all in. <laughs>